Hi there, welcome to this video. My name is Goki. Thank you very much for joining me. I'd just like to share some couple of thoughts with you from the Word of God. And it's my prayer that you'll be blessed as you listen to this in Jesus' name. So I'd like to share on what I've titled, It Takes Maturity to Be Able to See Yourself the Way God Sees You, to See Yourself and Acknowledge Yourself the Way God Sees You. It, it takes maturity to be able to know and see that you're just more than a sinner saved by grace. It takes yourself to be able to see beyond um, the unworthiness, the um, condemnation that um, living a life of sin brings and to see yourself as accepted by God the Father, accepted into this wonderful relationship with Him. So I'd like to share some couple of thoughts with you. Um, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10, it says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God um, has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And this is the point of salvation. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. And the Bible goes on to say, it says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. So there is a shift between, uh, sorry, there's a shift from what is old into something new. Verse 10 of Romans 10, uh, verse 10 goes on to say that with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you're born again, this is an experiential thing that we all enter into. That we believe unto righteousness and with our mouths we make our confession which brings us to a place, which brings us to a new reality called salvation. So it's important to note that this very act makes us acceptable to God. It brings us into right relationship with Him. You see, God has saved us from the condemnation of sin um, and the punishment or the consequence of our disobedience because someone else, Jesus, took our place. He took all that was due to us. So God could offer us, mankind, you and me, righteousness. He says, with a heart, one believes unto righteousness. God could offer this freely unto us because justice had been satisfied. You know, God is a just God. Every, you know, the, the book has to balance. So, so if, you, if you think about it, righteousness and justice has to balance each other. For God to offer righteousness to you, Justice has to be satisfied. So God satisfied his justice upon a man, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross of Calvary for you and I. And once justice had been satisfied through the blood of Christ, through the blood that was shed on the cross, and, and through him you know, uh, being uh, 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 raised from the dead on the third day, righteousness could be offered to you and I. God could offer you and me righteousness because of what Jesus Christ has done. So the Bible goes on to say, which brings me to my very first point. Now we are children of God. So it takes maturity to be able to see yourself beyond uh, or to see ourselves beyond an unworthy sinner to a place where we accept our worth because of him. We accept our worth because of what he has done. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of 1 John, I think chapter 3, um, from verse um, 1 to 2, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. It says, Therefore the world does not know us because he didn't know him. And then he goes on to say this very, very lovely statement. He says, Beloved, now we are children of God. Now we are children of God. Now you and I, those who have come to this place where they believe in Jesus Christ, 
now we are children of God. You see, God calls us his own. God calls us children. God calls us sons and daughters. It says, behold, what manner, what kind, what what, what uh, flavor, or what nature of love that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. God calls you and I sons and daughters of the living God. The Bible says in the book of um, John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, but as many as received him, he gave the right to be called sons of God, to be called children of God, to those who believe in his name. God gave you the right. God gave you and I the right, those who believe in him, to be called children of God, to be associated with his family. The Bible says in the book of Romans um, that God has given us, um, we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now we can cry, Abba, Abba, Father, Father, Father. We can cry because God has brought us into this wonderful relationship with him. We've been adopted. We've been brought into a new family. Now we are sons. We are daughters of the living God. Hallelujah. God calls us his own. He says, now we are children of God. Now we are children of God. First John 3, chapter 2. Behold, beloved, I beg your pardon. Now, now we are. Now you and I are. So I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm no longer one um, who um, rose in the dust due to condemnation. I'm no longer than I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even God sent his spirit into our hearts to bear witness of this truth. Um, Romans chapter 8 verse 16. He says, now the spirit bears witness um, with our spirit that we are children of God. God's spirit bears witness of this truth, of this reality that now you are a child. Now you are a daughter. Now you are a son. You're no longer a sinner. Um, you're no longer a sinner saved by grace. Now you are. Now you are. You've transitioned. You've moved. You're now living in a different reality. And it takes humility to be able to see yourself the way God sees you. Because that is how God sees you. That is how God sees your life. Hallelujah. Number two, the second idea that I want to share is that we are joined to the Lord. We are joined to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, it says, Now he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You and I are joined to the Lord. We are one with him. We 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 you know if if God looks at your spirit, which he um recreated, if you've come to this place of trusting in Jesus with all your heart, believing in the finished work of the cross, your spirit looks like Jesus is spirit because you're of one spirit with him. In other words, you 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 can't you can't separate out both spirit. It, it it's one it's one nature. God is is now comes to reside in your heart. His spirit he, he dwells on the inside of you by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So you are one. We you and I we are one with him. Praise God. God sees Christ. In your life, God sees Christ in you manifesting his life through your own life. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God sees Christ in you. God sees Christ in you and his life manifesting through your life. Hallelujah. And it's important to see ourselves this way that Christ is manifesting his life through me. Now when people see me, they may see a natural you. They may see a natural me. But the effect of my life on others would be as though that Christ was here. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is how Christ sees us. You know, I'll read one scripture. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, he says, And he died for all. He died for all. That those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who, um, who died for them and rose again. He says he died for all. That those who live should live no longer for themselves. Those who live, you and I, those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who um, died for them and, and, and rose again. So this life that we live or that we are living doesn't belong to us. We don't have any right, even though it might look as if, yes, we have a right. But God is living his life. Jesus is living his life through you and I and manifesting that life to all around. So you are one with him. You are one with him. Remember, now you're a child of God. Now you are one with him. And it's important that, you know, we see ourselves in this light. I know it's in a saved by grace. You know, you don't have to bury yourself under that weight of condemnation that you're never enough. You see, when God called you, he qualified you. You know, when God brought you close, he empowered you to stand in his presence. Yes, you know, we, we lay our crowns at our feet. Everything that he has bestowed upon us, uh, yes, we, we lay that, you know, at his feet. We, we lay our crown and watch because it's because of him that we stand. But God wants you and I to stand in this truth that you are a child of God. You are a son. As many as received him, he gave them the right, the right, the right, the right to be called children of God. God has given you a right. God has given you a right to be called, to be called. God changed you from the inside to be a different thing. All things have passed away. Behold, new things um, now all things have now been made new. Hallelujah. And you are one with him. You are united with him in spirit. You know, when you show up, Jesus shows up because he's inside of you. You know, religion does its best to put a wedge. You know, when Jesus was in the temple that day, um, when he took, you know, the, uh, the, the book to read, the, 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 the scriptures to read, he opened the page and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To to uh, and he goes on and on. I can't quote it from the top of my head, but when he closed the book, you know, all looked at him and said, "Is that not Joseph? Is that not uh, sorry, Joseph's son? Is that not the carpenter's boy? How come is he speaking such gracious words?" You see, religion tries to put a wedge between the life of Christ and your life. And when they put that wedge, you know, you're still that sinner unworthy of grace, unworthy of God's mercies, unworthy of, you know, everything God has to offer. But when you think of it this way, Jesus then, he said, yes, I'm the one. Yeah, I'm the one that the scripture is talking about. And think about it. If that same life on, is on the inside of you, guess what? You are also, you are also filled with that life. You are also anointed. You are also graced. You also, you also have power in you to do everything that God has called you to do. You see, this is the truth that we should imbibe. This is the truth that we should declare over ourselves every day. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. God loves me. God is on the inside of me. I'm one with him. I'm joined um, I, I'm joined with him. I'm one spirit with, with, with him. You know, I, I'll, go, I'll go on to say, finally, the Bible says that, you know, he made him who knew no sin to, 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 become sin, uh, to become sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. God has made you his righteousness. God has made you his righteousness. Now we are the righteousness of God. He has impacted his nature, his nature called righteousness into you. You know, we, 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 you know, we say that, you know, in words, but there's also a practical element to it. Because when you declare that you are the righteousness of God, God empowers you to do righteous acts. Hallelujah. I have the capacity to act righteously. I have the capacity to walk in righteousness. Sin has no longer dominion over me, over my life, over the way I think, over the way I talk, over the way I act, over the decisions that I make. The righteousness of God works in me. I am guided by his righteousness. His righteousness points me in the right direction. Hallelujah. When you begin to say things like this, 
God's Spirit begins to empower your words and reproduce the life of Christ in you. You're destined for greatness. You're destined for big things. It takes maturity to see yourself the way God sees you. Hallelujah. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Um, if you like this, um, uh, yeah, please share. Um, but God bless you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.